Well, like, we'll open the show talking about the Habs and the Oilers. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And we'll get to the Evander Kane stuff later. I, mean, okay. he's, I, don't, I don't like giving him. First off, I think the broadcasts were discussing last night about how much they were crediting Evander I, Kane. I thought they shall be ashamed of themselves, to be honest. I wasn't uh, sure if Evander Kane scored. Oh, oh, yeah, no, you, you really, oh, it wasn't like every five minutes, they're like, this is his ice time and that. Let's ignore the off-ice stuff because he's now on the Canadian team. I, that's, biggest that's, that's thing, on I thing I heard. Play-by-play guys. Biggest thing I heard. As a reminder, the last time he played was May 12, 2021. Prof- no, he, prof- professional, yeah, yeah. In, yeah, in, the, prof- NHL. in the NHL. Yeah, in the NHL. Yeah. In the, NHL. He, the last time he played the pro game was in the AHL in December. Yeah. Hmm. And then he shows up, plays McDavid, and he's like, we'll get to Kane later, though. Even, but legit. Okay. Disgusting stuff from the broadcast. And I'm willing to put that on a platform that if I put a resume on, I was disgusted by it. Um, it was like, oh, here's Evander Kane. He's playing so well, smile on the face. Here's the swagger. I think the only men- person to mention this could go wrong was Kevin BX in passing. Um, but, you know, that, that's great. But Hockey Day in Canada, Scarborough. Woo! Anyway. <laughs> Love seeing Michael Bunting, the Scarborough guy. We're going to get to that later. It's on the East End all, where you are, Adam. Oh, it was, yeah. Well, I'm in Pickering. I'm the neighbor, technically. Anyway, mm-hmm. I wasn't going to go search out hometown hockey versions of no, no. Okay. You're going to hear a lot from me at the start. I'm sorry, but get, get over it. It's our show. I'm one of the voices here. Okay. Last night, the Montreal, I love how Alex has now put his hand because he knows. He knows. The Montreal Canadiens. They're they've obviously they're last in the league. They're disgusting. They've won a single game in 2022. By the way, if, if broadcasters can't get creative enough, did you know they went to the cup final last year? Yeah, we know that. Yeah, it was yeah, it was the biggest thing in Canada. Shut up. Remember the Niagara Falls and the CN Tower where Habs Cully was great. Yeah, we remember. Now the team is falling apart. They go Saturday night, their first home game since that win against Philly. Philly. Last year. I know that was a couple of months ago, but so you know what I mean? <laughs> Last year. Yeah. First game home with the road trip. And you let 6-3 happen. The Oilers humiliate you 6-3 at home without McDavid hitting the score sheet. It's not just that. They've lost in so many ways this year. It, 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 I, I used to give this team credit for not giving up. They had a bit of zest. But the game against Anaheim, no response, and you let Zgrass pull off the Michigan. There's no response to that. There's no there's no respect there. And Primo gets pulled for like the fourth time in six games because they have no one else playing goalie because everyone is freaking hurt. David Savart is out eight weeks, by the way. You love to see it. You freaking love to see it. You know what I love to see during that game? That's what we're going to get to that a little later because this is the cherry on top. I'm watching this game with my dear mother. Taking a break from playing Legends Arceus, I had joked to her, if they're losing 2 nothing at the first intermission, I'm going back to playing Legends Arceus. Second intermission, still watching the game, I was playing Legends Arceus. And my mom's like, Adam, look up. And I see, I got to step away from the mic here. And I see what? I see Zach Cassian clip Samuel Montembo, who was coming for, no, I think he started the game, or did he get, yeah, I think he was, he was pulled eventually. Clipped by Zach Cassian. Wasn't pushed into the net. Cassian went behind the net. Primo's there with the puck. Clips him. No response. Jeff Petrie skates into his face. I don't think he put his hands up. There was no emotion in his eyes. There was, I don't think, if, if, if a guy takes out your goalie, if he clips your goalie, I want you to get so close, you know what he had for breakfast. I want to know what the smell of his cologne. Okay. Kulak didn't do anything. Paling was skating away. Now, I didn't like the Corey Perry had to fight Nick Foligno thing in the playoffs, okay? There's a sort of barbarian element to it. But when somebody hits your damn goalie, for the love of anything in this game, you stand up for him. And I think the only reason Petrie didn't is because it was a rare occasion of goaltender interference without Petrie pushing the guy in for once. Every time. You know that famous clip where I think it's Paul Mieri's getting beat down by Carey Price because he run into him? Because Petrie hit him into Price. Every goddamn time. But no, 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 at this point, we can't do anything Lots, No face wash, no cross-checking. I don't even think every hab was in the corner. You think the Leafs are soft because they're blowing leads? No, Sheldon Keith, what an obvious play that was. Oh, they're doing great all of a sudden, yeah. The Montreal Canadiens. And Jeff Petrie has had this reputation, apparently, throughout the league from being a big guy who's kind of soft. He is. He's soft. He should be gone. No exaggeration. Jeff Petrie should not be a Montreal Canadian. I don't want to see him play another game. 
You know what was the worst thing about all this? You know, it's just the worst part was not only did you let Evander Kane score his first goal back, not only did you let that happen, Hyman had a pair of goals up to see it. First game at home isn't even the worst part. In the box, there's Matthew Perot, there's David Savard, there's Brendan Gallagher. Your first game back home, and who is there in the box with this cowboy? Carrie Price is in the building, the performance in front of him. I just knocked my mic out, slamming my desk. Carrie Price was in the building, and you pulled that performance off. Back at home, no fans because the government sucks. Still better there aren't more French players, probably, because, you know, Lego. We're only halfway through the season. Rem Pitlick is the best player on this team. Paul Byron's playing tomorrow. Machu Pro is hurt again for another four weeks, as of course he is. That's it. That's, That's it. Dead. Yeah, it's good. Get rid of them all. Get I'm done. I'm, I'm no. so fed up with this team. Um, I mean, just to start, the Felino and Perry stuff I think was different, right? Because that was pure accident. I don't think this was pure accident. No, no right? Worries. Like I, I think that's that's the the difference here. Um, I, I saw Dusha. I saw a quote from Dushar. I was just looking for it as you were talking there. I, I just. I don't think like this is the quote from Ducharme after uh, the game last night. I want to see five red jerseys go into the corner. I never ask one person to fight, but I want to see five reds in the corner. When I first saw that clip and Adam, you made me realize this is only halfway through the season for them. There really wasn't any accountability there where I kind of felt that my, I guess my first reaction was empty out Laval and let the guys who want to play play in the NHL. Because if you think it's a lost season, I don't think that these guys are showing, you know, that word they use, like they're not showing heart right now. And I know that it's been a really, really tough season for them, but they're all vet guys that they didn't show up for Sam Mondebo. The only one who did was towards the game. I'm sorry, my mic is being very finicky. I apologize. The, the only one who ended up doing anything about it not even in the same period, towards the end of the game, was Michael Pizzetta. Because, of course, it was Michael Pizzetta. Kulak was on the ice. I think he just was there. Like, oh, hey, how's it going? I love Brett Kulak. No, he's done. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. It's, it's, and the only reason I mentioned Perry and that is just like the element of standing up for the teammate. Mm-hmm. You can't, I'm not saying you blow Cassie up from behind. I'm just saying you don't let them walk over your goalies because if that was Carey Price or Jake, although they haven't stood up for Jake Allen, they haven't stood up for their goalies all year. They've let Primo, McNevin, they've let them all just, they've left them out to dry every game. They've Carey Price with his goddamn cowboy hat. He looked great. He's speaking to the media today. We're going to talk about that later because that's massive, but you did that with Carey Price on the ice. Just throw in the towel. Fold. Fold. Go and send send the Habs to Arizona if you want. I, th- I, I do. I am a. I've watched teams not stand up for their goalies many times. I'm pretty sure I've rant, ranted and raved about them um, plenty of times. Like you, you have to. You have to. It's the one guy. There's absolutely no exception for that. You have to stand up for them when they're down. When they're down in that sense, in, in 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 what happened last night, I do think it's a little inexcusable. Um, I mean, I'm not a fan of using the word soft in this case because I just I don't know what to say. Like, I, I think the Canadians are right in the middle of hitting rock bottom, and I, I, it looks as if there it looks as if there's a sense of it's what's happening on the ice. It looks like the complete opposite of what we saw in the past few years where there was a specific identity to the team. And obviously we've talked about it. They've completely lost that. And, and at the same time, they're also bottom of the league. And I think it's a combination of all these things. It doesn't make it right. 
It's just when no one absolutely cares. And I'm not saying I do think the players care. I just think there's a sense of like this season's over and they've lost. Like it's just lost. Plus I'm seems like Ducharme also doesn't care when your coach doesn't care. I don't think you're going to get the same out of your players. Like he's honestly like a dead tree. That guy. Ducharme. He just, he doesn't show any emotion that he never had. Like just man. Get the boys fired up. Like if I was Dom Ducharme, I would have called a timeout right there. And I would have, in front of everyone, ripped that team. They deserve to be... Hum- they deserve to lose that game the way they did. It, it's the, it, it, it was so frustrating because at the end of that road trip, they started to give you a bit of hope that maybe they're going to play a little better. Um, and then they come home and they just do that to, you, to us. And the Anaheim stuff. And actually, I can't even remember if the Anaheim, I might be wrong. This wasn't the first game. I think the Anaheim game was first at home, but it's just, they're just two miserable performances back to back. I don't, I don't care. This team is, is just ripping my soul out at every opportunity. I, I don't want to watch them play, but for the integrity of the podcast, I do. I don't want to waste my Saturday the few times their games are actually on TV here in the GTA because. Blackouts are so original. Things are so dumb. I don't want to waste my Saturday. I'm playing Pokemon. I'm a four-star researcher in Legends Arceus. I'm enjoying it a lot. My 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 Kulava is almost a Typhlosion. Got a Luxray, Star Raptor. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I don't know what that and means. And I have to watch the Habs. You don't need to know what it means. It's fun. Okay. <laughs> the people who understand that reference is you're the best. That ever, like no one ever was to catch them is my real test to train them is my cause Pokemon should have gotten that reference at least I uh, just this team I got it I got it yeah uh, anyway here's a bit of good news Carrie Price uh, is set to speak to the media today actually before their game mm. against Columbus uh, for the first time probably since they lost in the finals I think he's about to speak uh, this is significant for a few reasons. I think lately a lot of people have been talking about uh, Carey Price's future in the game, or not in the game, but his future with the Habs, uh, how his knee and rehab has been doing, and everyone has been like, oh, when it comes to our, you know, Carey Price's play, he has to speak to the media to know if he wants to be here. What's been forgotten is Carey Price's mental health. And I think, and we all know that it was the doctors who recommended that Carey not speak to the media until he was uh, ready. So I think besides the rehab and him uh, seem to be on the ice for back-to-back days of full equipment, what's big here is that it shows, I think, there's a step in the mental side of it that maybe he's ready because he's speaking to the media. Uh, this is going to be must-watch, by the way, I'd say, or much much listen to. Yeah, probably. Like, he, if it's been... When it's been almost six months and we haven't heard much from Carey Price. Not that he owes anyone anything, um, to be honest. I do hope that I, I always worry and not, it has nothing to do with Montreal. I think it has more to do with Canada. Be careful with the questions. Don't be, because I, I think, and, and it's been talked about recently. We had the discussion about Justin Falk last episode for a different reason, but the media is not fantastic in this country when it comes to hockey. So let's, let's not try to absolutely throw this man under the bus. Not to name names. We know there are some reporters in the city of Montreal that are going to, maybe they dig, but if anything, I would like to think that they are going to be very careful and they are going to be like the Hab side of things. You can imagine they're going to send out a note saying, listen, what, you better be careful because I apparently he won't be answering the questions with care, but Ken Hughes will be on the call. Right. Which is, uh, that says something. And I think it, my Montreal's PR people, I think of always, if you ever watch a press conference with Carrie, you know, he doesn't speak. He doesn't give too much detail when he talks. Um, but the PR people have always known when Carrie's done answering, they move on right away. They've always been really, really good with them. Um, you know guys like Arpen Basu, you know that Eric Angle, well, once Arpen Basu gets through his question because it takes him 30 seconds to ask it. We love you, Arpen. It's just it's a running joke. Um, you know, Angles is gonna be good, you know John Lou is gonna be good, but there are certain guys that I'm I'm worried about. Um there's a bingo chart going around. It's like Eric Angles asks him about Shea Weber. Shea Weber. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. God, Carrie looked great with that hat, didn't he? He looked great, didn't he? 
Yeah, you look sure. great. I'm looking forward to the update. Um, I think that's what it is. It's an update, and I think that it's gonna, there's going to be great questions there. But you know, it, it is true that there's always going to be that odd type of take, and I don't. Really, I'm not really familiar with too many of the. I guess like Montreal. Montreal-based um, or surrounding areas, like publications that would, okay, I'll just say, like similar to the Toronto Sun, I'll say. Yeah. So I, I don't think there's going to be as many kind of different takes on things or what kind of questions are going to be thrown out there. So I'm, I'm just hopeful to be good. And to have Kent Hughes there is, is a big step forward. And I think I've used it already twice this podcast episode, but accountability there, showing that he's all in with the team and each player. I, I just wish that the Habs were in a different circumstance that if they did trade Kerry, he didn't have to come back to this team. I don't want the last game Kerry Price ever plays for the Habs if he's getting traded to be on this squad. I'd rather it be the playoffs and what happened there and how great he was. 924. Still. Oh, I, you know I, was, I was thinking of last night. Sorry. I, I'll end it here and we can move on. You know what I was thinking about last night? Congratulations, Henrik Lundqvist, because he just got his number retired. That was amazing. Love to see it. Yeah. If you don't think Carey Price is a Hall of Famer, he dragged this team to the cup final. Just take that in. Did someone, there are no did arguments someone there? Save it? Yeah. No, no. I just, I'm just, I was are you thinking. fighting with people again? I was. No, it wasn't even Twitter thing. It was a, it was an argument made in my own mind. Because uh, it was just, was another I Pokemon just, trainer that messaged you. Uh, there aren't actually that many Pokemon trainers themselves in the game because it's a like oh, okay. old thing. It's before people lived alongside the Pokemon. Anyway, 